Ezekiel chapter 18. Just for a few minutes this morning, I want to bring you a little message that I feel like the Lord's laid on my heart. Ezekiel, back there in the Old Testament, chapter number 18. We're living in a very scary time. And the Bible gives us a warning here in Ezekiel chapter number 18. Everybody look at it. Share with your neighbor if they don't have a Bible. And look at Ezekiel chapter number 18. Verse 30. Ezekiel chapter 18 and verse 30. Everybody give me attention now just for a few minutes. You think it's bad in here. You better be glad you ain't back there or out there. It's calm in here. Verse 30. Therefore, I will judge you, O house of Israel, everyone according to his ways, saith the Lord God. Repent and turn yourselves from all your transgressions. So iniquity shall not be your ruin. Look at that again. So iniquity shall not be your ruin. I want to preach on that this morning. Iniquity will be your ruin. You listen carefully as I try to bring you this truth here from the Word of God. God is saying to the nation of Israel here to repent so that it won't ruin them. When God wants you to quit doing something, He wants you to quit doing something not so He can cheat you out of having fun, but He can save you from being ruined. You listen to what I'm saying? God tells you not to do something. He's not telling you that because He wants to be mean and ruin your life and cause you to keep from having any fun. He's doing that to keep you from being ruined. Because the Bible teaches that iniquity will ruin you. Now, let's, let's define two words here this morning. Two words. The first one would be iniquity. What is iniquity? The word iniquity means this. A deed or an act that's wicked. It's done wrong. It's opposite of what God said. It's running God's stop sign. It's running God's red light. When God says stop and we step over the line, that's what iniquity is. So anything God said not to do and we do it, that would be iniquity. The Bible said that will ruin you. That will ruin you. All you young people, please listen to me. Please listen to me. Young people don't realize how iniquity will ruin them. You can go up here at the house this morning. Go to the AA meetings. Go to the drug rehab. Go to these other places. You'll see how what, what I'm talking about this morning. Now, the other, the other word that I'm going to dis, uh, define would be ruin. 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 Spell R-U-I-N. Depending on what part of the country you're from, uh, how you pronounce that. And, and the word ruin, it's pronounced run. You know, I've heard country people say, how to run you. You know, you ever heard anybody say it like that? And now, my mom's from Spruce Pine. And the people, the further you go up in the mountains, the more they talk. And my mom says it'll run you. How many of you ever here grow up saying run? That'll, that'll run him. And that sounds good to me. That's what I always said. Boy, I tell you, I tried to drink that milk and it was run. Uh, uh, you know, or I, or I smell I mean, that's, that's what I mean. R U I N, run. <laughs> and uh, I heard a man tell my preacher one time, he said, Boy, if you do that, it'll run you. And what he man, put somebody from up north wouldn't even know what he's talking about. It's the same word. It means R U I N. I think it's really ruin. And uh, some say it says runt. Uh, he did that and that run him. Uh, you know, but you know the idea. The word simply means destructive. It means something like, like a, a, a glass that's fell in the floor and broke. It can't be fixed. It's like the, the main definition of ruin is to be damaged. Beyond repair, can't be fixed. Now I'm gonna tell you kids something here. You boys, you girls, you think well, I can go out and do stuff and I can have a good time. See there, I can just go to the altar and get right with God and God. But if you keep fooling with it, and keep fooling with it, and keep messing with it, they're gonna come a point where you're gonna be damaged beyond repair, and there ain't no fixing it then. Hey, a lot of young people think they can play with sin. Listen to me, boys. Hey, listen. A lot of people think they can play with sin. 
lot of people think I can, I can, I can do this. I can do drugs. I can drink. I can do that. See there, man. We went out. I know so and so. He gets drunk every weekend. I know so and so. He does this there. I know so and so. They think, well, I can just do it. But you, you, you keep fooling with it and keep fooling with it and keep fooling with it. Finally, you're going to be damaged on repair, and there ain't no fixing it. And so uh, that's what I want to talk about this morning. God said, if you don't repent, you will be damaged. Beyond repair. He said iniquity will be your ruin. I'm going to give you three men in the Bible that are doing this morning five times. And I want to give you this truth. First of all, I want to say iniquity ruined Cain. In Genesis chapter 4, you don't have to turn to it. Little Cain. The first little baby boy on this earth. Here he was. Sweet little innocent baby boy. What did you name him? Cain. You know, they said, uh, they said uh, what did Adam and Eve do? After they got kicked out of the Garden of Eden, Adam looked at Eve and said, let's raise a little cane. Uh, but, but anyway, uh, that's what they done. They had this little baby boy and they put him in the arms like that. Oh, he was sweet. Oh, he was innocent. Oh, if you looked at him, you thought there's no way in the world. Isn't it funny how a, a newborn baby looks so innocent? And they look at you like, and you look at them like, how pure. How, how does a little baby like that go to being a serial killer? Well, them, them boys that walked in that Amish school, the, the man who walked in that Amish school the other day and just gunned down all those kids, he was once a sweet, little, innocent baby. Am I right? I mean, who would have thought somebody could have grew up and done something like that? Who would have thought that that would have? I'll tell you what happened to him. Iniquity ruined him. As Cain grew up, the Bible said, that uh, into a brand new world. He let iniquity get in his heart. His brother Abel was the keeper of the sheep, and Cain tilled the ground. Cain brought an offering of fruits and vegetables that God would accept. Abel brought the lamb and the blood, and God would accept. And uh, Cain found out the old saying, can't get blood out of a turnip. And brother old Abel, Abel had this, Abel, or Cain had his fruit stand set up. And boy, he had, he had uh, fruits and vegetables and all this stuff. And he said, here God... God said, no, don't want it. Abel went over here and killed the lamb. And the lamb's blood was shed. A picture of the cross of Calvary. Like he was talking about in Sunday school. Abel said, here God. And God said, that's what I'll take. That's what I want. Give me that sacrifice. So when that happened, Cain got jealous of Abel. And the Bible said that he found a day and he killed him. He rose up against his brother. The first baby that was ever born in this world turned out to be a murderer. Isn't that sad? How did he go from that? Cain didn't move his own TV. Cain didn't have the internet to mess him up. But he got that sin in his heart. And little by little by little, he hated his brother. He said, I hate him. I hate him. Listen, it's a dangerous thing to get hatred in your heart towards somebody. If I for myself start hating somebody, I say, Lord, you get it out of me right now. Because that thing will grow, and that thing will grow, and that thing will grow. And buddy, there's boys sitting in prison this morning, and they're, and they're sitting in jail this morning uh, because, because they will not, they will not uh, let iniquity ruin them, brother. I mean, they let iniquity ruin them, and they wind up in jail. They wind up in jail. And Cain, as far as we know, is in hell this morning because iniquity got in his heart and he called his brother out there one day. We don't know how he did it. Maybe he took a rock, hit him in the back of the head. Maybe he grabbed Cain or Abel, threw him down, choked him. We don't know. But he murdered his brother. And Cain is in hell this morning screaming because iniquity ruined him. There's a second man in the Bible. His name is King Ahaz. His name is Ahaz, king of Israel. He's in 2 Chronicles chapter 28, verse 23 and 24. You know what the Bible said? Iniquity ruined him. It ruined him. Here was a great leader, a great man, an important man, a prominent man. But his iniquity was his ruin. It was a time of distress. It was a dangerous time. You see, he was the king of Israel. It went like this. And everything. everybody started having trouble. Everybody started having problems. And instead of saying, Lord, help us. Lord, we're in trouble. Lord God, we need your help. You know what he did? He turned to the help of the gods of the heathen of the land. Ladies and gentlemen, we're seeing this happen in our country today. 
instead of repenting and turning back to God, you know what we're trying to do? Pass law. Listen, let me just talk to you for a minute while we're all in here being real quiet before all the madhouse breaks loose on us. Let me just talk to you for a minute. Listen, we have had five shootings in our schools in the last two weeks. One of them was not Columbine. wasn't New York City. wasn't Atlanta. It was at that little Amish school up yonder in Pennsylvania. I heard Brian Sexton preaching on it. And you might have heard him give the illustration. He said a little five, six-year-old boy got up the other day and he said that little old boy, it got time for him to go to school. And that little boy, he said, uh, he said, Mama, I'm sick. She said, Honey, what's wrong with you? He said, I'm sick. I don't want to go to school. She said, What's wrong with you? He said, I'm just sick. I don't feel like going to school. She said, Honey, well, is, you, is it your throat? Have you got a headache? You feel like you're going to throw One of our kids did out here a while ago. There's three little girls come up and grab my leg. One little boy. And they was hugging me. And one of them said, She threw up! And she, and she was hugging my leg. And I could smell it. So if i got something on that leg right there, that's what it is. Uh, uh, but I, but he said, No, I'm not going to throw up. She said, Honey, what's wrong with you? And, and she said, He said, Finally, he broke down and told her, he said, Mama, I don't want to go to school. And she said, why? And she, he said, I'm afraid there'll be a bad man there with a gun. And these kids see what's going on in our schools. And don't you think it couldn't happen at Freedom? And don't you think it couldn't happen at East Burke? And don't you think it couldn't happen at McDowell or High Brighton or West Coyle or any of these schools? It could happen, brother, tomorrow morning. And the kid was scared to get on the bus. And she went and met with the school board. And they said, what would you do to your kid? They said, what are we going to do? Now they're trying to say that teachers, some of them are trying to get a petition so that the teachers can have guns. And I thought, Lord, if I do that, the teachers wind up shooting them brats. That's right. Uh, before it's over with, the I mean, the devil will get in the teacher. What are we going to do? I'll tell you where we made a mistake. You know where we made a mistake. We thought we were like other nations. We don't need God. We don't need... And it's ruining our country this morning. It's ruining our country. Brother, we kick God out. Listen, uh, like Ralph said, I'm not the smartest person in the world, but don't it dawn on you that at the same time we took God out, Bible out, prayer out, then we started bringing guns in, killing people, uh, school fires, uh, bomb threats, everything else. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm telling you, iniquity ruins us. Listen, we're living in a crazy time. Have you noticed that everything is backwards nowadays? Lord have mercy. I mean, I'm telling you, everything. If you didn't know, if you didn't know, you, if you didn't know you wasn't crazy, you'd think you was crazy. I'm telling you, everything's gone haywire. I mean, little kids are all, I seen a kid the other day. The other day, I was visiting on Saturday, and this little kid about that high, about that high, went up to his daddy, and his daddy said, come here, son. He said, no. He said, come here, son. We gotta go. He said, no. He said, come here, son. We got here. I was sitting right here in the living room watching this. Oh, my goodness. And I was sitting here talking to the, to the, uh, the grandmother. And the little boy said, no. That little that man finally went over and grabbed him. He's about that tall. And picked him up. And that little boy was hitting his daddy in the head with his fist. And his daddy said, behave, son. Behave. I was thinking, oh, my goodness. Lord have mercy. If I would have hit my daddy in my in the head, what? I would not be here in front of you today. He would have knocked me in the next week. What is wrong with people? They say, well, I give him time out. That guy put that little old demon in the truck with him, and I could hear him hollering going up the road. Had him strapped in one of the little chairs. They put him in. And it was like the devil was coming out of him. Listen, people, what is wrong with that? Well, you say, well, it breeds violence if you spank them. Well, you're breeding the devil if you don't. The Bible said if you don't, if you spit that rod, brother, you hate that child. Listen, man, when, when we went to school, I don't believe in child abuse. I mean, you ought to be put in jail if you abuse a child. But when I went to school, we done something we wasn't supposed to. They sent us to the principal's office. 
They didn't call your parents to ask you today, man. We begged them not to call our mamas and daddy. I mean, please don't call my mama. Do whatever. So they, they, Mr. Kirstein down there at Nebo, they'd take him there. He said, Danny, bend over. I didn't say, no. You lay a hand on me, I'll get my lawyer. I, I wasn't stupid enough to say something like that. The ACLU wasn't in charge of things messing people up like they were, like they are now. Man, I bend over like that. He would get out a big old paddle about that long. That's what some of y'all need. That's why you act like you act. Hey man, somebody will pop that rear end, boy, a time or two. Hey boy, I mean I bend over like that. I remember boys they'd take books, they'd take books and stick them down in their pants like that, you know. Stick them down like that, and, it, and you could tell because you got a you know your square. <laughs> and, well, some of them really was square. Uh, but uh, but I tell, that didn't work. They'd make you take the books out. He'd bend you over like that right there. Son, he'd take both hands. That paddle was about that thick and had holes in it. I know about at school. Somebody tell us why it had holes in it. Make blisters come up on you right there. And he'd grab it and he'd go, wham! I like that boy said, he said, I was very patriotic when I was growing up. He said, uh, he said they put on the stripes and I seen the stars. Right, but it's like that boy, he, like that, he'd go, wham, he'd knock you off the ground. And I remember going back, I know some of you did too, to my seat, and I felt like I was on fire. I remember I'd sit sideways, I kissed the wrong time. Y'all, right? no, I didn't hurt a bit. And I did like this, you know. Like it. But it, I can't, listen, but we didn't have people in each other. We didn't have people blowing each other's brains out. Lord, have mercy, people. Something's wrong. Something's wrong in this nation today. Everything's gone backwards. We got the kids running the household, the kids running the school, the kids running the country. Where iniquity will be our ruin if we don't get back to God where we ought to be. Now, don't you take me wrong. I don't think nobody ought to be mean to a kid. If you're mean to a kid, you ought to be put in jail. But God has provided a nice little with padding on it where you can pop them a time or two with a hickory switch. You ain't going to break no bones. But if you went home and told your mom and daddy you got a whip in the school then, you, you got nothing when you got home. Have you noticed how everything's back? Boys have become girls. Girls have become... I, I was seen on TV the other day, they had some... I don't know what they was. Both of them used to be girls, but they're boys now, and then they got married to each other. That ain't funny, man. That's sick. That's sick. That's perverted. God didn't make Adam and Steve. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I don't like, uh, you know, I ain't going to get into all that this morning, but I'm telling you, something's gone wrong. Girls are working out, getting muscles, and boy getting. Okay, I'm going to just tell you something. I heard recently, let's just say this a girl. Used the phrase to describe a boy and said they was pretty. And I thought, well, she, she surely didn't mean that. Now I found out, I personally, personally me, have been told that I was pretty at least four times in the last year. At least. And probably about seven or eight. Now the first time a girl told me I was pretty, I thought... I mean, you're joking, or I mean, when we're growing up, we never described a boy as me. Now, some of y'all sitting there like saying, "What's wrong with that?" I think a lot of girls. No, no, no! It ain't supposed to be that way. I mean, I can say, you know, girls, you say a man's handsome or he's nice looking or something, but not pretty. I a preacher's a pastor's wife told me they said, they said, "Now, brother Danny, all the women in our church were talking about you," and I said, "Well, he is a pretty man." I don't know how I feel about that. I, I'm not sure. I mean, I'm going to go stick some mud in my fingernails, right, brother, and, and wear an old nasty shirt or something. I don't want to be pretty. Boys ain't supposed to be pretty. Girls ain't supposed to be weightlifters. Amen? Amen. <laughs> I, I'm telling you, man. First, I thought, well, they lost their mind and they're on their vocabulary or something. But now they're all saying it. I said, boy, he's pretty. No, he ain't pretty. If he's pretty, he might be. And I ain't. I might be a lot of things, but there ain't a queer in my body. I can promise you that. Amen. 
That's right. I'm going to tell you something, brother. Listen, you know what? Everything's gone backwards. Kids running the household, pretty boys, must weight lifting girls. Uh, I mean, Lord help. Now, uh, what in the world? That's why the that's why that's why you the you, the girls want to be tough, you know, and that's why the boys want to be feminine. The devil's trying to blur the lines. He's trying to blur the distinctions between the races, between the uh, the sexes, between the everything. Where nobody's any different. Listen, we're all different. God made us different. We ought to just thank God for what He's made us and be happy about it. Oh, that means get off on all that. I'm going to tell you, they're all, all them blonde nowadays in their roots. So I'm good. I'm about to tell you, let me tell you again right quick. Did you hear about that blonde? She called, They called at work and they said, they said, they got some bad news, your mother died. And she said, oh no. And she started crying. And she cried and cried and cried. And finally she got calmed down. They said, now if you need to go home, you can. She said, no, that's all right. I believe I can make it the rest of the day. I know y'all need me here. So she was going to work out the rest of the day. And she cried a little bit and quit. And about an hour later, she come running through the lunchroom. Just bawling her eyes out crying. Ah! Like that. And somebody said, Are you, what's you so upset though now? And she said, well, no, I'm upset because my mother died. And I thought I could handle it. But then my sister called and said her mother died too. And see how some of y'all are? You don't even understand that. I mean, Lord, this is discouraging. Look what i got to preach to. Listen, bro, how would you like to be a preacher in this generation? You know what the Bible said about that kingdom? Iniquity ruined it! We got to work. We're crazy! We say, what are we going to do about guns in schools? Well, let's adopt this law. Let's adopt that law. God forbid that we put up the Ten Commandments like they used to be. You know why they won't let the Ten Commandments be put up in the school? Because they said if we put them up, they'll read them. And if they read them, they might obey them. What is so terrible about thou shalt not kill? That'd be a blessing if they'd see that and read it. I'm telling you this morning, brother, listen, iniquity is going to ruin our country. You think you can fool around with sin and get, get by with it? You think you can mess around with sin and it not ruin you? Iniquity always ruins you. You start out with that first little joint, off probably a cigarette, and then that cigarette goes to marijuana. Then that marijuana goes to harder drugs. You don't, you don't think it's no big deal now. It took years and years and years. A sin is like cancer. You know what I heard a doctor say one time? The doctor said, I wish cancer would start off with the pain it ends with. In other words, when you first got cancer, if that pain hits you like the last of cancer, they could get rid of 90% of it. But you know what the dangerous thing about cancer is? It's silent and it don't hurt. And you could have it for months or maybe even longer and not even know it till it's too late. And it spreads all over your body and then you start hurting. Then the pain comes. Then they give you the morphine. Then, but it's too late! It's already! Your body's already damaged beyond repair. That's the way sin is. Sin starts out little in the heart. And you can't feel the effects of it. You listen? Teenagers, you listen? It starts out by just watching a, a dirty movie. It starts out by looking at stuff on the internet you ain't supposed to look at. It starts out with just one drink of beer. That's the way it starts out. It's just like cancer. But it'll finally get you. It'll finally get you. Iniquity will be your ruin. I heard a preacher tell the other day. He said his cousin locked himself up in a bedroom and they couldn't get him out. And they wouldn't come out and he was beating on the door saying, Open the door! Let us in! And the boy wouldn't open the door and let him in. And they finally heard him screaming and they had to bust the door open to get in. And they said he had a, a, a steak knife in there and it had been cutting his teeth out. Like this, and blood was pouring down of his, out of his mouth down his shirt. And he was taking a knife and cutting his his gums and cutting his teeth out. And he said, they said, what would you do? And he told the rock singer, he's listening to Alice Cooper, and he said, Alice told me to do it. Alice told me to do it. And he said the voice was coming through the tape player telling him what to do. Now, when you get on drugs, when you get on drugs, it opens up a door for a demon. And when that door is open for that demon, then the devil can start talking to you. I had a boy tell me in Marion. He said, Danny, I was high one day. He said, I was laying on the couch as high as a kite on drugs. And he said, somebody come. 
the car pulled up in the yard, knocked at my door. And he said, I started to get up off the couch and answer it. And he said, a boy's come out of that tape player and said, don't answer it. He said, I laid back down. He said, they knocked again. He said, I started to get up off the couch and a boy spoke through the tape player and said, don't answer it. And I laid back down. And he said, finally, I heard him leave. He said, what do you think that meant? I said, I don't know, man. But I said, the only thing I can think of is Jesus said, I stand at the door and knock. And the Lord's knocking at your heart wanting to come in your life. And the devil's saying, don't let him in. Lay back down. Get high another time, like the Beatles say. Get high with a little help from my friends. Listen, you kids, you hear me this morning. You can't play with drugs. You can't play with alcohol. You can't play. It's bigger than you are. It will ruin you. There's thousands of boys and girls that started out just like some of you that thought, yeah, I can do a little bit on the weekend. No big deal. No big deal. It ain't going to hurt me. But I'm telling you, it will ruin you. It will ruin you. They say that frogs, you can put frogs on the stove. They've clinically tested putting those frogs in water and turning the stove on real low. And them frogs will just sit there. Don't talk, boys. Quiet back there, Roy. Ray. Please be quiet. They say that you can frogs in a in a hot in water and turn that heat up real slow and cook them and they never know it. If you throw frogs in hot water, they'll jump out just like that. But you just increase it a bit of time. What'll get you? And you can cook them to death. Some of you right now, the devil's turned up the heat on you. You're a lot worse off than you was a year ago. Or you're that, or you're for that. He's just turning it up a little at a time. And you think, ah, you know, I was this bad last year, but I'm this bad this year. It ain't that big of a difference. You're just gonna keep on going and keep on going till iniquity ruins you. Iniquity ruined Ahaz. King of ill. It'll ruin you this morning. I'll tell you something, I'm through. Thousands of young people, thousands of mamas and daddies are in rehab, are in surgery somewhere this morning because they thought sin wouldn't hurt them. Nobody can mess with sin and it not hurt them. Please, make up your mind this morning. You're not going to let iniquity ruin you. I want you to bow your heads, please. Nobody, Don't nobody get up and go out. We are not dismissing church.